Greetings, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Cheryl Jennison DeProza, and I am joined today by Tom Coleman and special guest Rafiq El Alimi. And today they're going to be talking us through how to improve the learning experience with high quality audio in higher education facilities. But before we get into that, just a few items of housekeeping. Um, first of all, we are all coming to you from our homes as opposed to our normal controlled environments. So if we do run into technical or audio issues, we just like you to be patient and bear with us. Um, we'll work through those if they rise as best as we can, but we just think it's too important to get this information out to you in a timely manner. Second of all, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. It usually takes us a couple of days to get it edited, so please be patient. But when it is ready, it will be available at shore.com slash webinars. That's also a great place to go to see any upcoming sessions that we have and any of our past archived webinars. That's shore.com slash webinars. And then lastly, as we go through the session today, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those into the question pane, but be aware that we will be holding on questions until the end of the session. If you can't see the question pane and you're logged in through the web, just look for a little icon with a question mark and click on that to get to the question section. Or if you're logged in through the um, GoToWebinar app, uh, look for a dark gray toolbar with an orange box with a white arrow on it and click on that orange box to access the question section. As I said, type in those questions, be patient, and we will get to as many of them as we can at the end of the session. So without further ado, I think it's time we get into the actual webinar. Take it away, gentlemen. Thank you, Cheryl. <clears throat> Thanks for the great introduction there. My name is Tom. I'm a senior applications engineer at Shaw uh, Europe. And today we're going to be covering this um, the webinar that Cheryl just mentioned, um, improving the learning experience with high quality audio in higher educational facilities. There we go. So, um, yeah, I'm the, the chap on the right, as you can probably guess, and I'd like to introduce Rafiq El Alami. He'll be talking through the Mohammed the Sikh Polytechnic University setup uh, in about 20 minutes' time or so. So, let's whiz through here just a bit of information about Shaw for those that may not have heard of it uh, or know much about it in the past. Founded in Chicago in 1925, we now have manufacturing facilities in both China and Mexico, sold in over 120 countries across the world. 30 offices worldwide with five engineering centers, so truly a, a global company these days, and we're very, very proud to work for them. So higher quality audio to meet the demands of higher education. It is really a new world. Many universities are either adding or, or adding to or upgrading their teaching spaces to provide streaming and distance learning capabilities that will allow students to participate in classes and lectures while maintaining social distancing regulations or via distance learning. This webinar will focus on improving presentations and discussions with high quality audio in order to enhance the student experience, provide guidance on how high quality audio can enhance the learning experience in classrooms and lecture theatres, highlight the consideration that should be taken while designing and implementing AV systems for sound reinforcement, distance learning and lecture capture, and lastly, enhancing your audio experience to maintain new social distancing regulations. These are all the markets that Shaw focus on. So it's not just a small, a small company that works in just one small sector, but we uh, cover the touring sound, live events, uh, music making. So all the kind of uh, pro systems and also uh, music creation um, facets as well. But the product portfolios we'll be largely focusing on today are these five education, conference, presentation, corporate government, all areas here all use a similar portfolio of uh, conferencing products, mainly for the speech and vocal uh, pickup and reinforcement. A quick rundown of some of the highlights of our, our product portfolio. Right Dead Center is our uh, probably our most famous microphone, the Shaw SM58, used in all manner of gigs and tours and shows worldwide. Um, other notorious microphones, the Super 55 or the Elvis mic, as it's often known, you may have well seen that and its predecessor um, on all sorts of stage and often in movie films. And two microphones that in particular have um, taken uh, notoriety in the last sort of five or six years are the MXA 910 and also MXA 310. We'll use them and also the newly launched MXA 710 in the examples we use today. 
As well as microphones, we also make a range of headphones and earphones, and these are derived from the PSM and in-ear monitoring market we've had for many, many years too as well. So we've got um, the, the, the Bluetooth options as well as um, uh, noise cancelling headphones and earphones as well. So all for just recreational listening and or critical listening for a, a studio recording and that kind of stuff. One other massive part of what we do is the world of wireless. We're very, very proud to be such a uh, great manufacturer in the world of wireless and also in ear monitoring. So wireless could be anywhere from uh, a small church or a, a small school or something right up to the large educational establishments, as well as all manner of rock and roll shows and festivals. And in addition to those festivals, you often need to have the in ear monitors to allow the musicians to hear back what they're playing nice and clearly as well. And we make all manner of <clears throat> tiers of those products too as well. So we've got, we've got the range when it comes to the world of wireless. In terms of wireless conferencing and discussion, we've got another few options here as well, both wired and wireless. MX Wireless is a, a meeting space um, microphone system, usually used for near end pickup to send over to the far end on a video conference call. In terms of our discussion systems, we have MXC and MXCW. They look a bit like the bottom bottom picture on the on the right hand side there. This is a, a microphone with a built in loudspeaker and a screen, so you can have a, a discussion with a much much larger group of people to make sure they can all hear what's going on and perform voting duties and tasks as well. Now the products we'll focus on today will be this, the Shure ecosystem. This comprises of an end-to-end -end audio system. So we have microphones picking up the audio, processors processing the audio, and then passing that out to loudspeakers, so end-to-end -end audio. The mics we have are the MXA310, the 910, and also the 710. The processors in the bottom right are the IntelliMix Room, a bit more on that later, and the P300. The loudspeaker you can see on that top right picture, the MXN5W. And in addition, we have the MXA mute button, a small mute button, which allows us to easily control a room. So without the need for a, uh, a control system for the smaller applications here. So they're the products we'll largely focus on for the room applications today. In addition, we make a bunch of software too. The products you just saw uh, integrate beautifully with both designer and the system on um, a piece of software. Designer helps you figure out how many mics you might need in a room and hook it all up. Whereas system on allows you to monitor it on a larger scale. So great for a university uh, campus where you can have everything on the network and then um, a couple of users can watch and monitor system on just to see is everything okay basically. Channels and wireless workbench both are uh, the reserve for the pro domain and they're used for the wireless setup and monitoring of the the wireless microphone portfolios chiefly right so let's look at some rooms we've got five room examples here today we're going to look at a very large room a large room medium small and finally a solo room let's focus first on the very large room So here you can see on the top right hand corner a top down layout of a, a very large lecture theatre. Admittedly, there could be mar larger lecture theatres than this available, but for purposes of what we'd like to show you today in terms of all the solutions we could offer, this is what we'll use as our very large room. And one, one good example system we could use for this would be Axiom Digital. Axiom Digital is our top tier wireless mic system, and as you can probably read has a handheld body pack and micro body pack system you can see them on the right hand side uh, RF protection super super solid super low latency encryption and Dante uh, digital audio available from it as well a really really robust and solid system as an example so looking at the diagram on the right hand side now if you look at that presenter he would be picked up by a single probably handheld microphone as um, illustrated in the picture beneath and for simply for simple voice reinforcement in that room, his audio could be routed to the loudspeakers to make a very, very simple voice reinforcement system to make sure that um, they can be picked up. Now, how do we get the distance learning thing going on as well? We could use something like an MXA 910. You could place one MXA 910 there and then arrange its lobes so that the lobes cover the front area. Uh, you can see that blue line that goes from the MXA910 to the corner. That represents, if you look at the schematic on the left-hand side, 
the network path from the MXA910 to the switch. That goes to a P300, which is our audio conferencing processor. That will send the, uh, the near end audio to the far end and also allow the far end audio to be routed out of those loudspeakers. Now the benefit of the MXA910 is it allows you to freely move about the room and you don't need to have any microphone technique, but you can just move around the room freely and be able to just interact in that very, very naturally in that room. But if we need to have both um, the reinforcement and the distance learning thing, well, we could do it something like this. Here we've taken a blown up view of that same room and added four extra MXA 910s, for example. Here, we could get the front of the room covered with these, or those six lobes from three MXA 910s, making sure we've got good coverage everywhere in that room. In addition, the middle 910 could be used to pick up some of the students in the, the second and third rows of the room, get more coverage from the front left 910 and the front right 910, and lastly covering the back rows with the top left and top right MXA 910s. This is the preserve of a voice lift system. So now we're not, it's not like a single microphone being held and then being reinforced through a pair of loudspeakers, but we're going to be reinforcing this steadily because these, these lobes here will pick up the presenter beautifully, but the challenge of um, using uh, loud speakers like this is that we'll end up with feedback very, very quickly, which won't um, allow us to hear anything very clearly at all. So instead, what we do is use those lobes there and route them to a network of ceiling mounted loudspeakers. Now, I have to be quite careful about how we do this to make sure we don't um, get feedback and make sure we only get the right sound in the right place. So this audio will be routed at max volume to the speakers at the back of the room and at a slightly lower level of reinforcement to the speakers in the middle of the room and then with a lower level still we end up reinforcing there. Note that there's no reinforcement on that front row because the presenter is always close enough to them to hear them properly. In addition if we had someone at the back of the room who wanted to ask a question that could arguably be too far for the lecturer to hear. So uh, that particular lobe in the room would be reinforced as follows. At the front of the room, we'd have max reinforcement, a lower level in the middle, and less towards the edge. Again, note that we don't reinforce where that student is because the people next to them will hear them clearly. Equally, from the other side of the room, it would be a similar thing. So mild or low reinforcement close to the low, and increasing amounts of reinforcement the further you get away from the microphone. So that's a, a voice lift option there. Uh, it does require a, a little bit of setup, um, but it's certainly very, very doable and gives a very, very good experience when set up beautifully and correctly. The other benefit of it, of course, means that you can use those same um, voice lift systems for reinforcement within that room so the students can talk to the lecturers. And also uh, it means that you get very, very good voice pickup from that room to remote learning rooms as well. Maybe it's an overspilled studio as we now have to have social distancing. So now you'd link those two rooms together in a video conference call and know that everyone in the room can hear each other and that everyone on the other rooms can hear everyone else too. Let's move on to the large room. This is a, a, a still a very, very large room indeed. <clears throat> We're using a similar setup to before, but this time just a pair of MXA 910s. So the two MXA 910s could be placed uh, in the ceiling of this room, which has a, a very, very fixed format, as you can see. Aim the lobes to where the, where the people are speaking and talking from to get them for the same kind of application, really, so we can make sure that um, uh, they, that all, any, all the students and lecturers in this room could be picked up for lecture capture, uh, um, as well as being used for um, voice reinforcement, as well as um, uh, video conference type learning as well. And you can see on the bottom of the picture, we've got a MXA710, that long line at a bit of an angle, that's an MXA710 microphone, and that could well be used in these applications as well. And we're also not limited with the processing, we could use a P300 or IntelliMix Room 2. Let's go down to the medium type room now. So this time we can still use the, the same selection of uh, bits of kit, a pair of MXA 910s. And you can see we'll focus in a bit more about the positioning of the microphones in this particular room. On the schematic on the right hand side, you can see we've got our two MXAs connected up to the network. The rear microphone connects the rear two rows as well as provides the, the, the front end pickup for the lecturer in this application. 
the front MXA910 will pick up the front two rows. So this way we'll get very, very good uh, consistent coverage through across the whole entire room, uh, very, very cleanly and very, very easily and process it nicely in the P300 again for voice pickup, for lecture capture, as well as a video conference type call. Or this could be the room with the lectures in or the, the room where extra students are uh, built into as well. Now the benefit of the MXA 3910s rather with their steerable coverage technology is that we're not limited to a fixed setup in that room. Firstly, all the loads will automatically follow you around the room called autofocus. So as you move to the left or the right in your chair, the load will gently move about, um, about half a meter or so uh, to the left, to the right, up and down, just to make sure you're always tuned in as best you can. But in addition to them always tuning themselves up, we might have a slightly different lecture room. So the, the tables might get used into a, into a horseshoe configuration on a particular day, but we can use the exact same setup. And all we need to do is fire in a different preset into the MXA 910s to achieve the coverage we need for this room instead. So a very flexible solution here, precisely the same hardware, but um, a, a different pickup in the room, ultimately uh, uh, resulting in the identical audio quality <clears throat> as for the uh, the people on the far end of the call or those who are recording the lecture. Quick shout out now to the uh, new IntelliMix room. This was um, uh, some processing power to, uh, that was released at ISE back in February this year before all the, the COVID um, took a grasp on us and changed our lives massively. This takes the, the, the exact same processing we have uh, in a P300 and also in an MXA910 and allows us to use an, a Windows 10 machine to do the processing. So you're not limited now to having to buy an extra black box in order to do all of your sure processing. But if you're using a soft codec as a dedicated endpoint in a room, why not now use the, the built-in processing cycles you have in that and use that to be the end point for your room as well as doing the processing for your microphones as well. So we've got lots and lots of options in terms of uh, the microphones and also the processing side of things as well. So let's have a quick look at the small rooms now. So here you can see we have our, um, our small room here. This is the MXA310. So the, the, the baby brother of the MXA 910, it still features um, steerable coverage technology, but we've limited to four channels now from the MXA 310 as opposed to the eight in the MXA 910. So those channels will go across the Dante network to our power over ethernet switch. And then you can see on the schematic on the left now, we've got two options for processing, the P300 and also the, uh, the room PC as well. So really the choice of P300 or room PC, the microphones don't mind which pr processor you use. It's really down to the kind of uh, connectivity you want. If you're running a soft codec, then I'll probably recommend going for the IntelliMix room system. But if you're running a hard codec, then you've got the analog outputs on the back of the P300 to connect to something like an SX10. Or if you're using a bring your own device, you can use the USB port on the back of the P300 to connect up today. That, in fact, that's what I'm using, an MXA310 with a P300 connected to a Genelec loudspeaker. So on the table on the right, you can see we've got our uh, eight-seater table and beautifully positioned microphones with one lobe per person um, spread across there. There's also a special uh, lobe or special um, polar pattern, rather, in the MXA310 called the toroid pattern. This is basically a, an omnidirectional pattern that so picks up in 360 degrees but has a null at the top of the microphone. So from the angle we're looking at this table, the microphone would not be sensitive to sound to make sure it doesn't pick up things like air conditioning and um, projector fan noise and those kind of things. So lots and lots of options there. In addition, we've got all the noise reduction, AEC uh, and automatic gain control built into the, both the P300 and also the room, the room PC in Telemix room system too. Oh, there you go. We've got two options. I forgot that animation was there. And lastly, let's quickly whiz on to the, the solo options. So this is a, a motive microphone because we appreciate that these days that lots of people are working from home and with social distancing, maybe someone's in quarantine or needs to be kept at home or be isolated for a while. We have a range of microphones that can be broadcast quality really uh, and allow you to get very, very good quality audio without the need for arguably professional um, IT equipment here. So we have a range of the motive families. Um, 
um, ones to call that MV51 on the top left there is the, the Elvis style microphone, a uh, little um, interface there as well. Also some microphones that you can plug into your um, iOS devices and um, Android devices as well. So yeah, full plug and play uh, audio and allows you to very quickly and easily uh, get high quality audio out from these systems as well. Um, that they are most certainly solo use. You could arguably share with a friend if you needed to, but with them being nice and small means you can uh, make a nice uh, little, little system for you to check in your, in your rucksack or your laptop bag. It means you can um, yeah, quickly and easily get some audio done and recorded. Also, if you're doing a podcast, you could use the same microphone for your video conference setup like we're all doing these days, uh, as well as using that very same microphone to get uh, proper good quality audio uh, into your podcast or the, or the lecture information you're sending off to the students as well. One last thing, this is the little chart we've got showing the various uh, black box options, if you will. The one we haven't called out much is the Anna USB matrix. This is what you might use if we were using the MXA 910 um, in a, in a, or a couple of them in a single room by itself. The reason I say that is because the MXA 910 has the IntelliMix processing built into it. So arguably all you'd need to run a room uh, with an MXA 910 would be the Anna USB matrix to literally be the USB connectivity and or the input and output from the video conference codec there. The P300 in the middle um, is what we'd use or what I'm using today. So it has a total of eight channels of processing, whereas the IntelliMix room runs on a soft codec and has a total of up to 16 channels of microprocessing. I won't go through the whole chart right now, but need, needless to say, depending on whichever mic you use and what kind of connectivity you need in the room, we've got we've certainly got the right option for you to connect those microphones up to your system. And that leads me on to the, the end of my section there. I appreciate there's been a pretty quick whiz through of some of the Shure products and portfolio, uh, but hopefully gives you a bit of an idea as to using a, a, a building blocks, if you, like, if you like, of the various products that we have. We can certainly build them into a small system or use those same products and, and build and construct a much, much larger system as well, making sure we get good quality, clean, consistent audio running into all those rooms as well. And uh, at this point, I'd very much like to introduce Rafiq al -Alami. And um, Rafiq's gonna give us a bit of a guided tour of the, their system over in Morocco. Rafiq, over to you. Hello, uh, my name is Rafiq Lalami. Um, I'm uh, the head of the Digital for Research Lab at UM6P and at the same time the Digital Learning Lab, which is uh, a structure in charge of uh, bringing the digital aspect to uh, different as uh, aspect of education at the university. Uh, like uh, over the last uh, uh, year, we had uh, a chance to work with one of the products, basically to leverage one of the products that Shure has in uh, in equipping one of the like the the uh, the rooms that we use for education. And uh, I wanted to share some uh, aspect about that experience and uh, talk quickly about uh, what it brought us compared to the other solutions that we had. So uh, just, uh, I would like to uh, talk briefly about um, UM6P uh, to give you a much broader context about what the university is. So we're, we're mainly a research and innovation uh, university based in Morocco uh, that aspires actually to uh, bring the digital uh, research and innovation mindset to Africa. Uh, we have, uh, like our, our main focus is to, to tackle some of the important African challenges from nutrition to sustainable industrialization, uh, human capital, and uh, also public policies. Um, we have many research interests. Um, um, I, I listed a few of them, but uh, this list uh, keeps growing. And in order for us basically to, uh, to tackle all those um, uh, research project, we usually work in partnership with different universities uh, to uh, be able to make progress on those uh, projects. One of the key aspects uh, that makes uh, UM6P uh, kind of distinguished research university is our ability to have uh, like real scale 
what we call living lab. And uh, so these are like real farms. Uh, these are real mines. Um, and uh, like we have also smart cities, we have um, a data center, uh, we have like uh, digital uh, education facilities and so on. And, and so the idea uh, is, is that we, we want to take basically research from the basic um, um, like levels to like the, the technical readiness levels uh, from uh, the lower levels to uh, the TRL9. And uh, in order for us to be able to do that, we have to actually take that research into the field and uh, run it in one of our living lab. And this is one of the aspects that actually uh, makes a lot of uh, universities very interested to collaborate with us. And so, so those living labs exist in Morocco and in other African uh, countries. So uh, with regard to the, um, like the importance of digital education, uh, at the university and uh, why it was like one of the pillars that's, that we had is the fact that the, the university is actually geo-distributed over uh, many cities in Morocco. And uh, so Rabat is the uh, Moroccan capital. So we have like the public policy school is in there. Casablanca is the economical uh, uh, capital. And so we have our business school in there. Uh, like uh, Layoun, uh, which is more in the south where uh, we have sand and so on. Like uh, we do, uh, and, and water is scarce. So we have the blue water um, uh, park in there that allows us actually to test like the nexus between energy, uh, water and food and, and so on. So um, like, like this is, uh, and, and so we, we end up having students, uh, university students that can be in any, like located in any of those uh, like campuses that we have or sites that we have uh, within Morocco. And uh, of course, we would like to make sure that actually we're providing them with a very seamless education experience. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, we have many, many partnerships worldwide where we create uh, joint uh, programs. Like, for example, we have a joint MBA with Columbia University. We have joint programs with other universities in Europe, Asia, uh, South America, and so on. And very often, uh, we have to have uh, professors come in, actually, and uh, give in courses either at the university and many times they have to actually be able to provide those courses because they cannot travel or they have, um, or maybe like then, like uh, during the COVID pandemic, they, uh, they have to actually uh, deliver the course from their own uh, university uh, remotely. And then the other aspect which is interesting is that uh, we are offering most of those education programs basically for our African, universe, uh, African students. And uh, so uh, again, uh, the students uh, are often may or may not be able to be uh, locally present it, at the university. And so for us, uh, the fact that we're providing this content over uh, like digitally allows us to increase both the quality, but then also the reach of our programs uh, throughout like the continent and even beyond that. So one one of the things that's uh, like a part of the digital pillar of the university um, is, is, is the fact that we want to digitalize all the, the production, uh, the, the courses. And so uh, we, we have invested in um, a state of the art, um, like studios, uh, teams, like instructional designers, uh, program managers, we have audiovisual uh, people working professional uh, audiovisual people working on uh, creating our MOOCs uh, and, and digitizing our programs and uh, for us like uh, we have uh, had to uh, like once we uh, we do a scenarization of a course and we identify that we need to be recording part of it then uh, we bring the professors to the studios uh, those are two uh, or five studios that we have at the university and they are able to actually record the course we're able to do the production and then be able to assemble the courses uh, in MOOCs or whatever format flipped classes or whatever format we are doing and uh, uh, this what actually uh, uh, Tom was mentioning for us it's like can be considered as a small room uh, or individual rooms 
where a professor is actually uh, recording uh, the course. The second uh, part that's also interesting for us is what we collect, call the connected classrooms. And we have many of those. Um, we, um, uh, in the beginning, most of those had like a kind of uh, static layout. Uh, and then we looked at different ways to, uh, to have like uh, audio uh, configuration that allows us both the flexibility to respond to our uh, customers, provide the, the, the quality of the sound and everything. But then uh, the room, like the project that we collaborated with Sure on uh, using the MXA 910 uh, is actually this room. And as you see, um, like it has some uh, specific characteristics uh, that allowed us, uh, like that we could not use like the, the usual classical way of uh, wiring the microphones in the room. Uh, and uh, some of that, is as you see is the the fact that we have tables are not fixed like they the, all those tables and seats are immovable like you uh, it depends on the professor needs so uh, some of them will request this setup some others actually will request more uh, worker group setup and so on and so so we had to be able uh, like having mics that are fixed um, uh, is not gonna do it for us uh, because we uh, again um, the flexibility of this room is uh, so important uh, the layout of the flexibility of the layout is so important that we could not actually engineer a way to put fixed microphones and then uh, the other thing is that there is also different activities even sometimes within the same course so the the room may start this way and then uh, because now they're doing like uh, team discussions and so on, they may actually change the setup during the meeting, during the course. And in which case, um, like uh, you had to uh, accommodate that flexibility as well. Uh, the uh, the other thing that's actually uh, was interesting was the fact that we had uh, both, um, like, like uh, as you see in this case, the, the students are, are like most of the time seated, uh, the professor is gonna be standing up. And so we had to somehow allow the professor to walk throughout the room, uh, be able to uh, have the students that are potentially remote or um, uh, uh, like present be able to hear uh, like the, the the what the professor is saying and so he's walking at like a almost like a meter point whatever seven eight whatever two meters uh, depending on how tall is the professor and then you had also the all the students sitting and we had to pick that that uh, their voice like the sessions that we're doing were all actually recorded real time and uh, we uh, as part of the practices of the university is we make the recording available at the end of the session to all the students who would like to review something or we'd like basically to go back to a portion of the course that they missed so for us it was very important that we uh, actually pick all the recording and be able uh, to uh, to uh, have a good uh, sound quality for the recording and for also the students that are uh, potentially remotely um, uh, attending the course. And then uh, one thing also that's important is uh, the simplified user experience. When we had like table mics in other setups, uh, most of the time some people will forget to push the button to speak or um, uh, like there are two people uh, clicking and then you have disturbances and so on. So, and, and then the professor has to, to be walking around, the battery may run out for their, their, their uh, uh, like a wireless microphone and so on. And so you, you have always to have someone actually uh, following what's going on to make actually the user experience simple for both the professors and um, and the students. And uh, what we, we found interesting about the MXA 910 is, is the fact that, uh, sorry, I didn't use the layout of the table. I just grabbed the picture from, from the internet, but it captures a little bit the idea. Uh, what, what we found that was uh, really interesting was the fact that we had the ability uh, to configure zones um, uh, based on uh, like the setup that the professor wants uh, and the layout of the students. And we, we had the ability actually to also have different presets, in which case when the students actually want to um, 
uh, like the professor wants to change the setup or want to use a different type of setup, then he can change from those presets and be able to uh, to allow us uh, to, to allow the student to speak freely and have no uh, no problem. Then there is also this kind of dynamic targeting of the speakers, uh, which is very helpful. Again, uh, it simplifies the user experience and uh, it allows us to have this kind of uh, hands-free experience as well for uh, both the students and the, the professors. And then, um, like, like the thing that were, we were actually very um, uh, interested in once we did the setup is that actually the, the sound quality was, was um, really good and uh, compared to the other solutions that we had before. And, and so now uh, we made actually this kind of uh, solution is now the standard for us for all the new um, uh, setups that we're doing. The university, uh, like, like we're a very new university and uh, we're, we're in an expansion mode. Like uh, we have almost about 25% of the university uh, physical space that's built and we're building the remaining 75%. And so for us, it was very important to try different solutions and uh, be able to actually look at what would be uh, a solution that we would need to adopt for uh, the remaining air, like uh, developed uh, area of the university. And, and for us, like this kind of solution, like uh, the MXA 910 helped us uh, actually in this kind of setup, like for all our connected uh, rooms. And so it, it's now part of, of our standard. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to show here is, uh, is just the, uh, like the, there was a case study that was done um, and actually where both uh, the, the project manager on my team that was uh, working on this project had uh, actually to share uh, some of their, uh, like uh, what we learned through this experience and also the provider. And I thought it may be a good thing to uh, have you actually uh, visualize this video. And then uh, we'll I'll join the question sessions. Thank you very much. Mohammed VI Polytechnic University is an institution dedicated to applied research and innovation in Africa. UM6P is engaged in unique partnerships with world-renowned universities all over the globe. Digital education is one of the pillars of UM6P. We want to adapt the class's environment to the constraint of the learner, and for that, digital delivery of courses plays an important role. We want to open our classes to remote learners and even remote teachers when needed. Lifelong learners, for example, due to their busy schedules, may often need to connect remotely to a class and yet have a seamless participation experience. We want also to enable all our students to access full recording of their classes as soon as the class is over. For both those scenarios, Having a smart voice system that can efficiently track speakers and learners and ensure high quality voice capture is crucial. This is a modular classroom with multi-purpose usage and we can change the layout and position of the seats depending on the number of users. We have plusieurs scenarios, so we can use the salle, it's a salle modular, that can be used on plusieurs scenarios, so we can even divide the salle on three if we want. Ce qui a vraiment été demandé par le client, c'est deux choses principales. C'est la prise de son des questions des étudiants soit claire et que le son de l'extérieur ne sera pas capté. Donc c'est une captation par zone et la mobilité du professeur. Donc on a besoin de, que le professeur soit mobile et la captation de son soit homogène partout. We want to be as free as we can and offer the flexibility to the professor. The professor needs to move freely and we need to capture his voice irrespective of his position. For example, if he is in front of the students, then he starts moving at the back. And especially in a remote session, all the other participants that are not present within the session need to hear his voice as well. So the LOB MX-A910 and the solution sur mesure pour avoir a prise de voix correct fiable et modular grâce aux presets enregistrés. So we have achieved the real interactive learning experience. So this means that we can have students within the classroom, but also we can have remote students participating to the same session. And the beauty is that we can perform recording. 
and we can upload recording at the end. Pour une intégration optimale avec le codec, nous avons utilisé le PER300 comme passerelle d'anté analogique et processeur DSP pour les fonctions annulation d'écho et contrôle automatique du gain. La mobilité des intervenants est un point très important. Donc grâce à la nouvelle mise à jour du MX-910, on a pu avoir des lobes dynamiques qui assurent un niveau optimal dans toute la salle. The key success to this is the quality of the audio. So with the great user experience that we are achieving and the good audio quality that we are having in our recordings, we would definitely recommend using MX A910 IMX version in all our future deployments. Fantastic. All right. I think we'll get Tom's screen back up here now. And we'll see if we have any questions. So I don't actually see any questions. I think you, you gentlemen must have covered everything anybody might have wanted to ask. All right. We'll just give it a few moments to see if anybody has any questions that they can type that they would like to type in right quick for Rafik or Tom. While I'm waiting, I just want to reiterate that the recorded version of this webinar will be available for on-demand viewing. Um, you'll be able to find it at shore.com slash webinars. Uh, we'll also send out an email with a link directly to the video once it's available. So um, we will make sure you get that link and you can access this at any time on our website. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions. So if you do have any questions, you can always go to sure.com and click on our contact button and get in touch with anybody at Sure from sales to support. Um, and they can help you make the best decision on what Sure products and solutions might be best for you. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, here we go. We got a question in. <laughs> How long did it take to determine the right design for the room in the university? Rafik, I believe that's a question for you. So, uh, th thank you for the question. Uh, the, the, the entire project, like actually uh, for us, um, the, the, like the, the design we were doing for the room uh, was not just the mic. So we had, uh, when we take on one of those projects, like uh, we have to look at the lighting part. Uh, we have also to look at the sound um like uh, uh, effect and so on so that's actually to ensure that uh, there is no echo nothing and then <clears throat> we we look also at the camera's angles to ensure that actually uh, the system has to cover the entire room depending on the setup and so on so uh, there is uh, almost three tracks uh, that go in parallel uh, the, 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 like the study does not take that much time i think uh, f the thing that takes usually more time is the remediations because uh, once you look at the lighting, as I said, like the the the, the whole course is recorded uh, real time, and and we have like a, a like a, a, a ready uh, like a, an entire recording of the session at the end of the course. So 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 because we have to do that, like the sometimes when we identify remediation issues with either sound echoes or um, or, or the lighting issue or the angles and the setups, this is what takes a little bit more time. But 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 usually like this kind of project, like the the study part takes about like a couple of months to three months um, between both the like the study and the remediation. But if if there is no remediation, it could be it could go much much faster than that. All right, great. Thank you for that. Um, next question for you again, Rafik. Uh, what are the solutions you are going to implement during social distancing? So uh, for for the social distancing part is actually uh, we had uh, as a university we uh, we did uh, we had the what we call uh, uh, plan for continuing education. Sorry, I'm doing a translation from French. It's le plan de continuation d'éducation. So so with, which uh, which is a 
something that we did and working with all the department to ensure that actually they can continue like uh, we we fully closed the university uh, like for uh, for classes starting mid march uh, and uh, we we worked with every department to make sure that actually they are able to um, uh, to to have a plan on how they do that. So so the good thing is that because digital, as I said, was one part of our our one of our pillars. Like we had many courses that were available that allowed actually diff the different programs to do the continuation. But what we did beyond that is that actually we took that expertise that we have and we uh, moved it to uh, to help. Uh, more than 200 universities in Africa uh, uh, through our networking programs. So we opened actually uh, a platform to uh, of our courses to all the universities in Africa. We we had like a almost like a two month coaching training program for the professors on how to uh, integrate the uh, like the material, the, the the resource digital content that we have uh, in their program, and we're helping them actually do this kind of transition. Uh, a lot of initiatives. We helped also the, the local min uh, Ministry of Education to uh, create new content because they didn't have uh, all the, the needed content to cover the three months. Uh, we launched other platforms uh, that we had internal platforms made them available to uh, to students in Morocco and other African university. But uh, uh, luckily, I think uh, we were lucky enough that we had this kind of structure that was uh, available at the university uh, that had the expertise and enough content to help uh, a little bit all the programs within the university in Morocco and other African uh, universities. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. And with that, I think we have finished the questions. Um, so like I said, if you have any other questions, you can visit sure.com and click on the contact button to get in touch with us. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope you enjoyed yourself. And we hope you learned a little something. I know I always do. And we hope to see you on the next one. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day.